When Bitcoin launched in 2009, it sparked a frenzy of excitement among investors and led to a proliferation of other virtual currencies. It's also given rise to rampant fraud as scammers exploit people who are struggling to make sense of a constantly evolving financial technology. What should you look for when choosing an investment platform? What are some of the signs of fraud? Today in our special report, we delve into the world of virtual currencies and see what it's all about. We will be the biggest out there and we will write history and the cryptocurrency community will have to rewrite philosophy. This isn't a concert. It's an event promoting a new type of virtual currency, the OneCoin. The event was hosted by Ruja Ignatova, also known as the Crypto Queen. She founded OneCoin in 2014, billing it as the next Bitcoin. Investors sunk more than 5 billion U.S. dollars in the currency, but in 2018, OneCoin was revealed to be a huge scam. Ignatova had said her currency would beat out Bitcoin, a cryptocurrency that launched in 2009, invented by a person or group of people by the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto. Bitcoin is different from standard currencies in that there is no central bank that administers it. As a decentralized virtual currency, every user acts as a central bank. 所謂去中心化金融,當然指的就是把一些這個金融中介單位把它去化掉。This so-called decentralized finance is finance that gets rid of financial intermediaries. Why do so many people support Bitcoin and utilize payment methods that use it? A very important reason is that international transactions come with high fees. But if we make the payment with digital currency, there are practically zero intermediary charges. How does Bitcoin turn its users into a central bank? Picture this. Mary wants to buy software from Jim and sends 500 NT to him. If that transaction could be recorded in an account book viewable by every user, it would have a high degree of reliability, removing the need for a central financial authority. The first digital currency to achieve this was Bitcoin. 2009, On January 3, 2009, a block was created. That's what's called the Genesis block. Satoshi Nakamoto mined the block, generating 50 bitcoins. The second block was generated on January 9th. The two blocks were linked up, creating a blockchain. What is a block? A block is basically an account book. Let's illustrate how the currency works. Satoshi Nakamoto has 50 bitcoins he created in his account. He buys a book from Mary and pays her 20 bitcoins. That transaction is recorded in the account book. If Mary then uses 10 bitcoins to buy a pen from Jim, that is also reflected on the account book. To keep track of the transactions, the ledger is stored in the computers of all three users, making it an open and transparent process. So then, who's filling in the records and verifying them? Who's preventing tampering? And who keeps all this in check? When you join Bitcoin online, your computer will automatically download a set of scripts. In theory, if you are willing, when those scripts are downloaded, they authorize you to verify Bitcoin movements on the blockchain. If you're willing to do this, you can look over the transactions in the previous 10 minutes and check whether the records on the blockchain are true and correct. The system will then generate new Bitcoins for you as a reward. When you verify other people's transactions, you get Bitcoins that were not originally in the system. That's why it is said these bitcoins aren't mined, and the people who keep the records straight are called miners. Xie Mingfeng is studying for a master's degree at National Taiwan University. He used to be a bitcoin miner. I thought mining was lucrative. Back in 2017, some of my friends were saying they had gotten a lot of money through mining. At that time, the most famous case was a friend who said he invested some money in Ethereum when it launched in 2016. His investments grew 100-fold. He went from zero to 100. Since Bitcoin's launch, more than 10,000 other virtual currencies have emerged around the world. Even social media giant Facebook has proposed a cryptocurrency of its own, DM, which was originally announced under the name Libra. One or two years have gone by, and the development of Facebook's currency has been riddled with problems. Even some of the financial bodies that said they would join have backed out of their pledges. A major reason of this is the collective opposition from central banks in many countries. In most countries, the right to issue currency is restricted to the government. This restriction is a convenience for citizens as well as a means of state control. 
发展了将近一百年以来的现代货币系统。Modern monetary systems developed over a period of over a hundred years. I don't think they will be replaced by tech-based virtual currencies anytime soon. But modern monetary systems, under the efforts of the central banks of many countries, will eventually move toward digitization. Will they move in the direction of distributed ledgers and encryption? It depends on the circumstances of the time. But for now, most people know little about Bitcoin or virtual currencies and cryptocurrencies. That lack of knowledge can leave them vulnerable to scammers. 呃，这两年我们看到很多诈骗集团，它就是以这个加密货币来作为一个幌子。Over the past two years, I have seen many scam rings using cryptocurrency as a lure. How do they lure people with that? They promise returns on investment or yields of 100, 200, 300, 300%, or even 500 and 1,000% in just one year. If it really is that good, why wouldn't the scammers invest the money themselves? They're actually after your principle. Investing in virtual currencies is like investing in the stock market. You need to open an account on an exchange, but with so many options available on the internet, how can you avoid getting duped? 第一，当然是你必定不需要先把你的任何资产给。First of all, know that you'll never need to transfer any assets to an account you don't know. If you're asked to do this, that's a very dangerous sign. The second thing you can do is to do some research on the exchange or instant trading platform you want to use. Check whether the money from retail investors is entrusted to a bank. Bitcoin's rise has made more people aware of virtual currencies, but in reality. Currencies like Bitcoin have been part of everyday life for quite some time already. Examples include tokens used at arcades, the points given out at online shopping platforms, and the virtual money used in video games. And as time goes on, the line between virtual and physical currencies becomes increasingly blurry. Ah, in Taiwan, actually, there are some retail outlets that can also use this to pay for it to be used as a payment method. In Taiwan, there are some firms that accept bitcoins as a form of payment, but they are still a minority. The trend seems that people are becoming more aware of digital currencies. For a long time now, virtual currencies have been hiding in plain sight. They are often used for discounts and promotions like frequent flyer miles, loyalty schemes, or even in the form of buy 10 coffees, get the 11th one free. 那过去我在政府部门服务的时候，就是啊，一直听到我们年轻的这些啊创业家或我们年轻的朋友，就是说。Back when I was in government, I kept hearing young entrepreneurs and friends urging us to set up an agency to deal with virtual currencies and cryptocurrencies. They said this is already a trend, and if there's no regulatory body, it will be harder later on to establish good ground rules. They said they wanted a reasonable amount of oversight. Virtual currencies are rising in importance as a financial tool. As they grow and are adopted by more people, they'll only increasingly expand into our physical world.